Paul, Randy Hackett is not present. Not present. Holly Hall. Holly Hall. Here. And Russ. Here. Mary Lang is here. Yeah. I'm here. Mark yeah. Hickey here. Okay, let the record reflect all members are present except for Randy Hackett. Okay, approval of agenda. Um, got a message to amend the agenda to include approval of the graduation plan in discussion and in the action item. And that's a change from what was put out earlier. Can you guys all hear me okay? Just nod your head. You could be a little louder. Okay, I'm not sure where the microphone is on this thing, but all right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended, unless there's any other. Mark, I'll make that motion. I'll take. Okay. okay, it was moved by Director okay, Petron and seconded by Director Lang to approve the agenda as presented. Lang as amended. Any discussion on the agenda? Okay, you guys go ahead and mute yourselves. You guys go ahead and mute yourselves. Unless you have something to say, just keep yourself muted. That's much better. Okay, no discussion on the agenda as amended. Okay, we'll do a quick roll call. Director Holm? Yes. Director Garrods? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Director Lang? Aye. Director Petron? Aye. Okay, motion carries 500. Approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve minutes for a regular board meeting on April 27th, superintendent negotiation on May 12th, and policy meeting on May 12th. Holly Holm, I'll make the motion. Russ Garrett, I'll second it. Okay, it was moved by Director Holm and seconded by Director Garrett to approve the minutes. The board meeting, April 27th, superintendent negotiation, May 12th, policy meeting, May 12th. And we'll have a roll call vote. Director Holm? Aye. Director Garrods? Aye. Director Lane? Aye. Director Lane? Aye. Director Petron? Aye. The motion is carried five zero zero. Reports news, superintendent's evaluation. Okay, we had a fairly wide ranging superintendent's evaluation. And in summary, the board met May 4th to evaluate Superintendent Phelps. In our evaluation, we felt as a board there are areas he has both strengths and areas that need improvement. He excels in community relations, keeping the board informed. Areas we want to see him improve include strengthening the culture and within the district and strengthening working relationships with district staff. Board committees. We're on item B, um, board committee meeting policy. Did you wanna address that, Director Lang? Certainly, thank you, Mr. Gerard. Um, the policy meet grew yet, and we discussed 430, 431, and 9 regarding um, sub two teacher policies. And also uh, our facility usages. So we we and 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 uh, 
the non-union conditions of employment. All of those areas have been discussed and presented. Uh, and this is what the second or third reading, I'm not sure. I don't know what it is, but, but that's, you know, pretty much all All right, thank you. Do you have anything to add, Director? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, next item is C, elementary is principles. Dr. Grabata. Here and meet with families and the students, 30 minute conferences. And they would use those conferences to build relationships, set some goals together, uh, learn about the interests and needs of the students, and also assess the students in reading and math so they had that information right when they started the school year. There are more schools doing uh, those kinds of conferences at the beginning of the year. So they've taken the initiative and I support it. I wanna, wanted to share it with you to see if there were any concerns they've started some planning but of course waiting to make sure we're all on the same page together but i commend them for taking the initiative and i kind of a pilot program but if it went well we could move it up some of the grade levels but it's a great time to uh, establish a framework and platform to work from for the whole school year and it's a lot better to do that right away than waiting two months and doing it. And I think especially getting that assessment information early can be helpful. So I wanted to share that and answer any questions or if there are concerns, try to address those. I have a question. Um, when they do the assessment, are they uh, assessing based on state standards? Yes. Yes, okay. that's right. And they would be looking at um, stand, re, kindergarten standards and uh, readiness for uh, reading, of course, literacy, and also number sense. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Any other comments or questions or concerns? Um, I mean, if there are not concerns, uh, if you don't want to express it now, you can let me know later. But if not, then I will move ahead with that, planning with them. I also just wanted, again, to thank all the staff for working as hard as they are. I, I think we're all getting a little worn out uh, with distance learning. Uh, but everybody's doing uh, all they can to provide uh, quality learning opportunities every day for the students, there's been good cooperation. We've tried to keep the curriculum and daily routines as far as attendance and expectations as normal as we possibly can. And we're getting uh, lots of good support and participation. Again, I think I mentioned this last time, the biggest challenge is uh, with the younger children and parents having to work and manage their working and then also the learning of the children but overall, I uh, just feel very grateful for everybody's help. At the end of the year, the last day, we're going to have a goodbye parade for the students. So the staff will be outside uh, lining the sidewalks of the school and uh, families and parents will drive by in their cars and we'll say goodbye, kind of the last goodbye for the school year. And uh, are working on uh, graduations in grade five is our main focus and they're going to be doing a uh, remote grade five graduation they're putting a lot into that so uh, that, that's basically it we're working hard each day i don't think any of us realize that distance learning would be more work than being at school but it really is <laughs> we've all been pretty busy okay, so, thank you okay Next secondary principal, Mr. Swenson. Uh, thank you, Chairman Gerard. Uh, what we've been working on 
for the past few weeks is graduation. Um, you can see the signs out front and the signs at Bills and on Highway 10, um, doing our best to provide something special for the class of 2020. Um, I had a few seniors stop by as they were watch, looking at the signs and I was sitting at my computer and all of a sudden I saw faces peeking in my office window and they uh, they stopped by so I went out and talked to them and they I, I was surprised the seniors and just students in general how much they um, miss coming to school and uh, it was they even asked can we go in and look at the building like it was like a museum or something that they hadn't been in before and uh, uh, so they're there's definitely a connection to this place and it, it, it's uh um it was good to hear students have that feeling uh if you are the prayerful type we need we need sun on friday and the weather does not look like it's going to be great for us we looked at possibly changing it to thursday night uh because we were going to do graduation practice that night anyway but there's just too many conflicts with other people's schedules uh, so we are going ahead on Friday. Uh, if the weather is okay, we will be on the track with a drive around ceremony where the students drive up and get out of their cars and come up on stage and get their um, Then uh, if it's not good weather, we will be doing it in front of the activities entrance at a scheduled time throughout the day. We start at 8.30 with our first one and our last one is scheduled for 7 p.m. Um, so, but we'll have, we scheduled about 10 minutes in there. We're going to have uh, their picture taken. We're going to turn their tassel, give them their diplomas. Uh, parents can come up and take a picture and, uh, then they'll get in their cars and the next scheduled appointment comes in. Um, not ideal, but if it's something that we have to do, I'm, I'm confident that we can, uh, make it a worthwhile celebration for the, for the 60 plus kids who are on, on pace to graduate. So uh, that is the, really has been the sole focus. I would echo Dr. Gerbata in thanking the staff at the, at the high school uh, for their efforts over the past few months with the distance learning. Uh, it is not easy. It's not easy for parents. It's not easy for the kids. Um, it's not easy for staff. There is not a staff member in this building or any school building of any teacher that I've talked to that wouldn't take the kids back tomorrow if they had the chance. Um, but we have done the, what we can um, and uh, tried to hit really the important, really the uh, power standards uh, for the, that, are, that are scheduled out for the rest of the school year, try to hit those. And there's no doubt that there will be some spiraling and some revisiting of some of that instruction next fall clear up some of those gaps that that might exist there and uh, I'm confident the teachers will do that the, the HRS process that we're in with with prioritizing the standards and using proficiency scale um, will undoubtedly help us map out where those gaps um, are occurring in the curriculum um, and where the shortfalls of distance learning occurred, we should be able to address those areas and revisit those areas in, uh, especially in math, English classes that build on each other uh, next fall. So, uh, but the staff has done an incredible job. Um, one of the things I'd like that, uh, that, that uh, it, it surprised me was there wasn't even a hesitation with the staff when confronted with this it was how do we make it work and then they got to work doing it and they learned new technologies and new uh, communication and uh, I believe at the outset of at the end of this they will leave distance learning with some new tools in their toolbox that they can use um, that hopefully we can help with uh, you know days where there's substitute teachers next year perhaps they can make use of that technology to bring uh, more uh, standard instruction on days where they're absent. So there are some positive outcomes and some positive things that staff have learned from this going forward and I applaud them for that. That's all I have. If there's questions about anything, uh, I'm happy to answer. Do board members have any questions? 
I have two. Um, when are you going to make that weather call on Friday, whether or not it's inclement weather and it's going to be in the activities entrance or it's going to be on the track? We're making that call at practice on Thursday night with the parents. Okay. And uh, what's the board involvement in the graduation? Well, right now with distancing, if I know that we were going to, I'm going to talk to Director Petron um, about presenting diplomas, um, presenting diplomas um, at minimum to his daughter, as that has been a tradition of the board in the past. Um, and then I believe John was, I, 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 Randy was going to be there also to present diplomas or not. I am not sure of that. Um, the board is invited. It, 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 the social distancing part of it is we're trying to right now find a way board and staff are kind of in the reigning scenario with the schedule. There's really no easy way to do it. Um, if it is on the football field without the rain, the board would be invited that we're inviting staff uh, to park their cars on the football field and observe the ceremony from their vehicles. Um, Tony said it really wouldn't do any damage to the football field as they're going to be reseeding and doing some things with it this summer um, to be able to, as long as it's not too wet or you know muddy or anything, but to be able to park cars on the infield right on the sideline by where the ceremony is. And uh, we would invite board to, uh, to take part in that if they so choose. Graduation is at 5 p.m. on Friday if we are outside. Thanks, anybody else got any? All right, thanks, Mr. Swenson. Next item is E, business manager. Hello all. Can you hear me okay? Can everybody hear me? Okay, it's that time of year again where we are looking to revive. Oh, I have a lot of did you I have a lot of feedback. Is everyone muted but me? Okay. Um I had sent in the board packet um the spreadsheets that I do to do the budget revision. Um, and I will go through them really quickly. The board had a chance, and I believe the public had a chance to look at them. They were shared on board book. Um, so if the board has their, their spreadsheets uh, available, I'm just, I'm gonna go through it rather quickly so we don't drag on the board meeting too long, but there will be an action item that we have to revise this budget. I will also go into a budget to actuals in June, but I need to do this step in order to do an adopted budget in June for the for the next year. So we're gonna start with our fund 422, which is our unreserved, unrestricted fund. That is our main operating fund. Um, all our salaries, benefits, all our supplies, all our utilities, um, anything that is used to run this district just comes out of that 422 unreserved fund. Um, it looks like I'll, I'll just go through revenues and expenses quick. It looks like our estimated revenues for this year, and that's what our, that's what's budgeted, will be $8,953,701. And the expenses will be $8,902,870. So um, as it stands, we're looking at approximately a $50,000 surplus in the general fund. Um, that is an estimate. We, at what I budgeted this year, we will see some potential savings, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, in transportation. Um, we should see savings on what I budgeted. They won't use all their budgeted expenditures. And custodial, they won't use all their budgeted supply and uh, repair expenditures. So um, good year for custodial and transportation is kind of out of our hands with, with the COVID closure. Um, we might, we probably will save on some of the utilities too, I'm assuming, with the closure with some electric, some utilities. Also, what could impact in a gain on this budget will be special ed costs. Um, we could, there's a potential to get $30,000 more approximately in special ed revenue. Um, I won't get that report until the fall. 
Um, so I did not budget it. I like to budget it in what I know is coming. So that's not on this budget. So that could be an additional $30,000. And I do wanna say that I budgeted for 1,033 APUs, which is adjusted pupil units. At our last MARS submission at the beginning of May, we showed 1,039. So I, I gave myself a little grace on that. I, I, I never budget at the full capacity of our APUs because they could change. Our next MARS submission is in the middle of June. So I'll have more concrete numbers. None of our special ed numbers are in there or a PSEO. So that we could see some up and down a little bit in our numbers. So that, that is why I don't ever budget for, the, for what we see during the year because that is live. It's a live budget. Um, but we can see we can see a, um, a little more than fifty thousand come into um, our uh, gain at the end of the year. And so I'll just go. I'll hit the bullets here. Um, let's go to fund four twenty four, which is our operating capital. It's like it's on the right hand side, almost the right hand side of the spreadsheet. It looks like. We did, we did, I try, I'm trying to keep that 280, 290,000 in our fund balance for some of the projects that I have on the books for this coming year that I had, I had spoken and Director Gerard had asked about the lights and how some of that was being budgeted. Well, that's being budgeted in operating capital. Um, and we are holding a balance for um, some potential roof repairs in the future. So I, I like to keep that fund balance a little higher because you have to replace HVAC or roof, it's expensive. And LTFM, which is fund balance 467, which is an also, also another restricted fund balance, but that's for projects to the facilities. So um, I'm trying to keep that consistent. You see it's, we had a beginning fund balance of 119,000. Our in and out was pretty much what we received, we expensed in 2019-20 leaving us pretty close with the same fund balance to end the year. So um, that's how the general fund is, is squaring up for us. Like I said, the general 422 is what our statutory operating debt is based on. So that's really the one we really wanna focus on. And it looks like we're gonna be in pretty good shape on that this year. Food service has been interesting. Um, it looks like we will come out in about $2,000 to the good in food service, which you know is a good surprise for us, um, seeing that we potentially weren't servicing any money. We got a little more money for summer food. Um, so that's positive news. I don't know what next year is gonna look like. So we'll have to play that one by ear. And so when you go into the bottom of the spreadsheet, you saw food service. And so now we have community ed, when you see when I have in yellow is 444, that's the restricted fund balance for school readiness. That's our three and four year old program. You'll notice that there's a $10,000 deficit spend this year. That is um, refunds that we had to give for our program. Once we stopped, um, about 5,000 of that is refunds. Once we stopped um, servicing kiddos and it went to distance learning, parents wanted you know, refunds back, which we're, we're obligated to give. So that's the biggest impact on that fund. However, they do have a very comfortable fund balance an $84,000 fund balance there. And I think across the board, it looks pretty good. Um, obviously we don't do anything with our debt service. That's adjusted by the state automatically. That's our mortgage payment. And uh, scholarships, we have been working. This year, we'll, it'll be on our books because we did activity on it. Um, we've been working with Initiative Foundation, and uh, I believe the individual's name is Zach. We're trying to get that off our books for 2021. Um, however, I did get a special okay from the state. There's 10 districts in the state that did, because there are some districts that don't have organizations like an Initiative Foundation to move that trust account in. Um, so if it, is, if, it, if it has to stay, which I don't think it will, um, we'll have to put it in a special reserved account that crosswalks to our general fund. Um, so that's something we are still working on. I've been in, I, Joel, myself, and, and uh, Superintendent Phelps have been in, in talks with the Initiative Foundation to try to get that off our books. And 
Yeah, uh, that's what I have for so far for the revising the budget. And if you go to the next page, I just want to say there's another. So this was the first spreadsheet. I don't know if it, I know the board. The board has that. Could you see that? The second spreadsheet looks like this. Can you all see it? That is yeah. just, thank you. That's just, that's a spreadsheet that shows, again, what each object of our expenses and revenues was budgeted and how far we are percentage of using that, that expense or getting that revenue in. So for example, fund one expenses, 1% 1 is salaries. I budgeted 5.7 million. To date, we have spent 4.5 nine two million so we're at 71 percent of of capacity on on expenses on in salaries and we will be very close to that because we do have um teacher summer payoffs coming so and that's how that reads in case anybody was wondering how that spreadsheet reads it's just showing what i budgeted for salaries benefits supplies that kind of stuff and where we're at in percentage year to date so that's telling the board how much we've spent so far, how much we've received in revenue. And I will be, next year, I will be giving this to you every month so you can see how it progresses. So that's how, how that spreadsheet reads. Any questions? I feel like I'm going through it real fast, but I don't want to spend 25 minutes on, on the budget. No? Thank no? You, Oh, can I, I do a, I just want to talk I about do a, Go ahead. So one thing, Don, on the, on the 424 budget, is there, where do I look to see what percentage we've spent on that? That is a reserved fund balance. I only gave you the unreserved, the money we're using to, to spend on every day, our big account. Um, we have spent all we have spent all that we got this year and more, so we're at 110 percent of okay. what we spent in capital. So if you look at the first spreadsheet, mm -hmm. we will spend we will spend 222 thousand. We had most of our technol all of our technology came out of that this this year, which okay. was 152 thousand some odd dollars. That's why operating capital looks so that we spend so much because most years I have to budget it out of operating capital. I can also include that. I just normally don't because it's pretty straightforward in, in those reserved accounts. Yep, so. I see it now when you talk about it. Yeah, so really what we budgeted for, we've already, like you said, we've spent more than what we budgeted for already. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, the one thing I do wanna mention is um, we, we are gonna start doing enrollment every month starting next 2021. So when I tell you there's 940 kids in this district, that means butts and seats. That doesn't mean our adjusted ADMs, our adjusted um, membership hours, or adjusted pupil units, because grades seven through 12, they get a heavier um, membership. They get 1.2 instead of a one on membership. So when I say, like right now, as of the last March submit, submission, there was 940 students in the building. That doesn't mean that that's what we're counting as adjusted pupil units. So just remember to keep that in mind. And some of those aren't full units because people are coming and going through the year. So um, it's a good indication of how many butts and seats we're doing. But um, I will tell you at the end of the year what our actual ADMs will be because the changes is real. It's live time. Any other questions? Director Petron, did you have one? She just answered my question. Thank you. Oh. And okay. if there are any questions, once you guys look at it and you have, I know I talked to Director um, Gerard about streamlining, streamlining this a little more, because I know if you don't see it every month or you don't see it all the time, it's not an easy read. I understand that. Um, 
So, I mean, I'm really, if you guys want to come in and, you know, we can work on it together or you can come up with suggestions for me. The, the only, it's not, the, this is different than a cash in, cash out business. We're mandated by you, Fires and Gatsby, to set budgets and all our, all our numbers are based on budgets, like any other city, state, federal, public entity. So when I say we're doing budgets, but it doesn't look like we're going to spend our full budget or we overspend, everything's based on what our budget, and then we do budget to actuals at the end of the year. So that kind of it can get confusing, but I'm certainly happy to, to um, I'll probably present this almost every month too, just so we stay on top of it. And it's, you know, not out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, next up, Superintendent Phelps. Yeah, the first thing, uh, graduation, you heard Joel talk about it some. Um, if you notice, tonight you've got plan D and E. Uh, that's because originally had A, B, and C. And just a few weeks ago, things got changed because we got different directions. Um, tonight, what he presented to you, number one, I told you it's a parking lot uh, with a drive-by graduation. Uh, that's exactly what it is. It's a parking lot. You have all the uh, speakers, including uh, Joel, uh, on videotape or on videotape, on tape, on YouTube. Is it Joel? Just nod your head if it is. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be broadcasted. You can pick it up and listen to it uh, while they're there. And uh, then from there, when all the, the speeches are given, all the, what can I say, awards are given, then one car at a time will drive up, the student will get out, walk up on the stage, pick up their information, their diploma, and get a, a shot. Our uh, basketball coach's brother has volunteered to take pictures of every single one of them, so he'll be out there. As they move off the stage, their car will move over the other side of the stage, get off. If I remember right, Russ, there are two sets of steps on there. And then uh, why they're, no? <laughs> uh, as they're walking by, the next car will drive up and then they'll get uh, walk up there. And that's how we'll continue. Uh, board members, as you said, if, if you wanna come, you're certainly welcome to, but you should not be out of your cars. Uh, matter of fact, uh, just Joel out of his car is probably the best, but there has been a tradition where Mark, your daughter, is uh, graduating. You certainly can get out of the car and, and give her hers for her picture. Um, if it's a drive-by, then that is the next plan that he's got, and it starts, like you said, at 8.30 in the morning with people coming in. It'll be very similar to what the uh, pre-K did, which was outstanding. I gave some uh, acknowledgement, pictures will be taken, and it'll all happen outside the activity. Um, that is there for your inspection tonight. We need you to okay that. The next thing, I, are there any questions on that for me? Seeing none, then I'll move to uh, grades. The uh, elementary, this will need approval tonight too because it's a change from what we're doing. Uh, the elementary will be going an M for meets expectations. PM partially meets expectations, and that's SM means starting to meet expectations. So there are three parts there. Uh, students will always be advancing. Uh, no one is held back in the elementary, no one's held back in the high school um, or the middle school. In the secondary, the guidelines are an A equals the standard for an A. You understand it very well, you can use it, you can perform it in different uh, situations of B, you understand it, you can use that, the standards. Uh, C, with little nudging, you got the standards down. And then parents certainly have the option to do a pass or a no pass. Uh, that is another option they have without an A, B, and a C. So let's say your child is struggling, we wanna give them an option of passing. If they need a little more work when they come back, that's okay, you catch up as the year goes on. And then the no pass just means they didn't do anything before. And basically they didn't do anything when uh, they were there. And as I said before, uh, not everyone has the technology. Parents will be part of that discussion as well. 
that they can make a choice for their child. Questions, did I miss anything, Joel? No, okay. No questions on that. Ben, hey, John. I, yes. So just to clarify, so like in the high school, right? So typically we used to see like, you know, so typically we used to see like, you know, 90 and above would be like an A minus and then, you know, 80 is a B. So is that, that's, they're not going to go by that percentiles anymore. That's going to be, like you said, an A based on whether they can know it and recite it, B if they can do so on and so forth, or are they still going to use the percentiles? I believe some of the uh, teachers will still use percentiles. Others will go based on the standards and the protocols they have. Remember, they haven't gone through everything. It takes a year to lay down the foundation for the uh, proficiency scale. So it would depend on the class and depend on the teacher. Joel, did I forget anything on that? Or does that pretty well hit it? Uh, one, one thing that I would add to it is just that, uh, yeah, they will. It, it, it's kind of marrying the distance learning with what happened for the first two months of the semester. And uh, so students will have, students and parents in every class will have the option to either take the letter grade or they can choose to take the pass. So uh, think of the student who, I would have knocked this class out of the park if I would have been there the last two months and had, I would have I aced it, but I really struggled with this math class, not having the teacher there. And instead of having it negatively affect and they're worried about GPA, they can take it as a pass and it doesn't affect their grade point average for the semester. Um, if in the high school, it will award them the credit for passing the course um, as long as they were active before and they were doing things during distance learning. Um, they'll earn the credit, but they can choose to take that class of, yeah, I got, I struggled with that science class. I'm going to take that one as a pass. Um, but, you know, I did good in my other one, so I'm going to choose to take those with the letter grade. And so students and parents will have that option. Um, and uh, there'll be a school reach and a school reach email that goes out once we have your guys' approval tonight. Thank you, Joel. Much okay. appreciated. Any other questions? Then we go down to Gravata Retirement Rehiring. Uh, Phil uh, plans on staying here no matter what. So, you know. It's like it doesn't matter one way or another, uh, but what he's looking at is, is collecting on his uh, TRA um, from the uh, Teachers uh, Association, his retirement fund. And he has an opportunity if he retires and is out for one day and comes back, um, then what happens is you know he gets to collect that and also pay here. The thing we gain is $8,000 uh, that we aren't paying into the retirement fund. Uh, Phil, did I forget anything on that? Yes, I think that's about right. The other thing he uh, will do is you're not gonna ask for any more money. So it's a gain on us. Um, and if we don't wanna give him that retirement piece, he won't take it, he won't uh, put in for the retirement, but that's gotta be a guarantee that we're going to do and that'll be up for discussion later on. Any questions on that right now? And from there I go to the MOU. That was a mistake that we found uh, when we went through. My fault, I'll emphasize that, that was my fault as we uh, went through. Somehow I missed it, Dawn missed it, uh, three different people on the uh, uh, Teachers Association missed it, and why would you find it? It wasn't anything, we tried to negotiate it, and that's actually how it got in there by mistake. And all we have to do is correct it. It wasn't anything negotiated. If we don't correct it, um, it's an easy arbitration, a mediation arbitration for them. It was in it, there was no discussion about removing it and going back to where it was pre-2019, uh, 2017. Uh, the last one I have up there, I'm going to take the contract that you offered me uh, last week. And so we'll get that done and, and taken care of. Randy and I'll uh, have to sign it when he comes in next week. Any questions on anything else? We were thrown a curveball on uh, Thursday night. I mentioned that briefly to you in that um, 
we've been begging for some direction for about two months on summer programs and everything. And uh, the state finally came out with some recommendations for that, uh, including summer programs. There's only one program that we do and uh, through the school and that's band lessons right now. And that's something uh, we'd like to continue with. That's very important to keep those up. It's just like reading. That's why Phil furnishes a lot of books for kids over the summer through a number of different programs that we run. Um, and we can do that distancely, distancing. The state also suggests that we could possibly try a hybrid course where maybe one day a week that we bring a student in or students in to, to work with. And uh, that is a possibility, although at this time, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, we, they suggest that, that we have a maximum in the room of nine students, no more than that. That fits everything they're saying, but here's the kicker. They tell you only use that room once or you have to clean it totally. And that is why, you know, our fitness center stays closed. We can't regulate that. That's inside the school. We don't know how long, if we open it up for everybody, how long before people will be in. Are there any questions? With that, I'm done. Okay, I have a request. Could you uh, give us a briefing on the daycare? Does that go all summer as well? Right now, um, we got permission start as of Thursday evening that we can use uh, community ed to move into that field. The problem is finding people that want to work it. And that'll be something we look at. Um, People have called me and I said, right now we can't in the format that we're using before. Now we can, and so we're looking for people to open it up. Hopefully we can get that before the end of the week and we can move forward. It would not be the MAP program. It would strictly be child care. What we can do that's different is uh, we don't have to do it just for essential workers. We can take in other people's children, but the Things that we're doing map we can't do the same thing it's strictly a, a child care during the day okay how many kids do we have in daycare right now uh dawn could probably tell you better uh it varies i know one day we had like seven in another day we had 24 students in. phil do you got other you you're on mute phil we're averaging, uh, you know, it does depend on the day, but often 18, 19, 20. These are uh, essential workers' children? Yes. That's all we actually can take in right now. Um, that hurt a number of districts because they were taking in everybody in pre uh, and post after the days that I know one district that's not much bigger than us, they were making tens of thousands of dollars and basically it took that that money out of the kitty form. Anybody else have any questions for a superintendent? Okay. Item seven, discussion information items, continued discussion, tabled spring coaches. Anybody like to address that one? Sure, do you want that? for discussion so I definitely the spreadsheet that was attached that talks about the area schools where that where they're doing um, that definitely very helpful and I think that was the information definitely I was looking for to help me make my decision so uh, I appreciated getting that that was perfect you can thank uh, Tony for that he's the one that put it together I'm not sure Tony if you want to pipe in if you can pipe in did you get a final uh, thing from Foley? That was the only holdout yet. No, I, I had not seen any updated from Foley yet.
this is an action item for tonight, uh, whether to move forward to hire all those. Uh, if you notice, one of them isn't what well, I dropped off of there because it really wasn't a hire. It was okaying that individual to be an assistant coach. Um, so you understand Michael Marshall has been the head coach for years. Uh, that took some talking, I understand, from Tony to get him to come in and help. He was there helping initially. Uh, Lenz, the head uh, trap coach, he's been there in the past. Uh, his sister was already approved for head track coach. So we have to decide what to pay or if we pay, what proportion or do we pay all of it. Okay, uh, next item, policies. Any discussion on those? Okay, and then uh, it's kind of divided up into 430 and 431, which is the uh, letter of understanding for uh, substitutes. And then item C is facilities fee changes. And uh, Then the next item is item D, football lights. Any discussion on that? I, I do think uh, now's the time to do that. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get them with that rebate. A lot of rebates are, are going out. Um, energy rebates is what they are for saving. Uh, we've seen that happen, for example, with electric cars and things like that. And, Little by little are disappearing. But basically, I think uh, original number that was given to you it would cost over $42,000 uh, to do the lights there. We had to do something with the poles and I wasn't gonna pull out the poles without putting new ones in. And we get, it cost us less to do that than it did to do two in an emergency and replace them. I'm very thankful for the guys that uh, did that. It's just a few more steps to get the rest of that up. Remember, the last polls lasted over 30 years. And with the energy savings from the LED lights, uh, that might make it back over that time. But that's, it ends up to be less than $1,000 a year for the lighting that we put up there. Okay, next item, grading during distant learning. Did everybody read the state guidelines on that? You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. What I got out of it was basically you pass them on to the next grade. But what the basic gist was? The percentage of what they go by, right? Mr. Gerard, Mary Lang. Uh, my only question about the grading is how will that impact people who are going on to higher education facilities? Um, is, they usually do those by percentages. You know, like if you have 90 to 100% or 80 to 90, whatever. Is this pass, this type of grading gonna be accepted to kind of bump up their percentages then for entrance and knowledge? Um, that's one of the things, uh, study that I did in my previous position to find out, and I've shared this with you before, what I did was go to Cornell uh, University, Ivy League School, New York State, Stanford, uh, Minnesota, uh, the U of Minnesota, and University of Wisconsin, talked to them along with smaller schools in Minnesota about the grades. They, they have an understanding what a grade is worth, from every single school that comes in. For example, an A here might be different than an A at Uppsala, or an A in St. Cloud, or an A in Foley, or an A at uh, YZ. Yeah, they're all different, and they have a good feel for it because they've had enough people there. Um, they certainly look at the tests, but they know what grades stand for versus where they come from, unless we're new students. That's why sometimes some of these schools, it's very difficult for your first student to get their foot in the door. Once a student gets their foot in the door 
and they say, hey, maybe it's a Harvard. And they go, hey, this kid knows what he's doing. He didn't have perfect A's all the way across, but we, we understand what that grade's worth. Percentages, that's a discussion I've tried to start a few times and, and uh, it gets bumped out. Um, that's kind of old school percentage of grades. It's what you know. Uh, what is a percent? Percent of the homework you did, the percent of the time you showed up, um, just is it subjective or objective testing? It's what you know, that's what really counts now. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Are they also using the MCA or they're not using it this year because of distance learning? Um, as far as I know, that's one, uh, one of the I things know, that took, can you mute, Mary? Thank you. Uh, one of the things that took a long time to get the information on it was uh, collaborating with all the different universities. And the, the, these are some of the things that they suggested. Matter of fact, it's exactly one of the things they suggested was go A, B, C, um, pass, no pass. Go ahead, Mr. Swenson. Um, the our college students, some of them were, some of them have been counseled that they want to take that into close consideration. Check with the college that they have applied to. Most of them have been admitted already, um, but if, if definitely there is advantages to having the letter grades in there based on St. Cloud State's going to look at a pass a certain way as opposed to the U of M, as opposed to Concordia, and so they have to kind of probably check with their college in terms of what is going to be acceptable now like i said most of them are admitted already to the places they're matriculating to in the fall um had this happened earlier in the year during college admission time the conversation would be um probably much more in depth about doing checks with the colleges they're applying to as to what guidance they would provide the students in terms of what they should do for their grade on their official transcript we have added a line at the bottom of the transcript saying something about the COVID-19 in the spring semester of 2020 and how GPAs can be affected by the grading system that we were using for this semester. Um, I don't think it's going to have much of an impact on admissions like I said because it's done already but uh, it's definitely something that our college kids are taking into account as they make the decision this week as to whether they're going to take a letter grade or take a pass, no pass. Also next year, it's that, uh, oh. that discussion is going to happen next year more so because these MCA tests have already happened for this year. So um, next year, that discussion is going to really take effect with the colleges on what they're going to use as far as uh, accepting people, keeping in mind that colleges are getting kind of desperate for students now too. Okay, anything else on grading during distance learning? Next item, Dr. Gabato's access to pension proposal. Any discussion on that? Okay. Next item, MOU, teacher's contract. And that's just to fix that error, right? Yeah. Correct. That's all it is, is just to fix the error that was made. Okay. And, Next item is and it's to go pay hey, Noel. Go so, so this is right to go back to the previous contract, right? Because this is something we did talk about, but we never came to agreement on, right? So we're going back to what it was in the, the earlier contract, right, John? So yes, it could be something that we want to look at next time. Yeah, absolutely right. If you remember, we tried to change it somewhat, and that's how it got in there by mistake when I cleared it. And um, unfortunately, it, it retroed back to uh, the last contract. Um, so that's something obviously we want to fix. 
they offered, we didn't want it. So it's supposed to stay the same way as it was, that all it is is to retro back to the last contract. Okay, next item is item eight, policy reading, second reading, substitute teacher policy and letter of understanding. Any discussion on that? And classified substitute policy. John, can you just clarify for the board um, the difference between a classified substitute and a regular substitute? Yeah, a regular yeah. substitute 430 is, is a teacher. And before we're putting them on a contract and they sh really shouldn't be on a teacher's contract for contract. That's, that's for uh, hirees for the year. Uh, so we write a letter of understanding saying exactly what they get paid. A classified worker is someone that is not a teacher and has a classified job. So you're a bus driver, you're a custodian, you're, you're uh, one of the lead cooks or a head cook. Those are examples of the classified positions. Everybody else belongs to a union. They're also classified, but they belong to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, action items. Claims accounts and financial. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve those. I'll make a motion. Uh, sorry, this is Russ Garrett. <laughs> Got it. I'll second Ellie Holm. Okay, it was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Holm to approve accounts payable and receivables and employee reimbursements as attached and approve all other financial all reports other as financial presented. Report. Is there any discussion on claims, accounts, and financial? And uh, if Don's still there, I noticed on him uh, there was like a whole bunch of refunds for. Uh, prom and sports and stuff like that. And I'm just assuming that that's because that stuff was all canceled. So they didn't have to pay for it. That is correct. Um, we did refund it back to the families because there was no participation. It was canceled. Okay. Any other discussion on those? Okay, hearing none, let's do a roll call vote. Director Hall. Hi. Hi. Director Lane. Hi. Hi. Director Petron. Hi. Okay, motion carries 500. Approval of budget revision. I'll entertain a motion for that one. Home, I'll make that motion. That motion. Anna Alston. moved by Director Holm, seconded by Director Lang to approve budget revisions as presented. Is there any discussion on that item? Okay, hearing none. Let's do a roll call vote. Director Petron. Aye. Director Garrods. Aye. Director Holm. Aye. Director Lang. Aye. Aye. Okay, that motion carries 500. Zero, zero. Approval of spring coaches. I'll entertain a motion for that. This is Director Garrett, I make the motion. Director Holm, I'll second. It is moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Holm to approve hiring the above listed spring coaches. Is there any discussion on that one? And okay, these we're going to hire these people to 
not coach on a season that's been canceled. Is that correct? That is correct. That is the that is the proposal, I guess. And I've kind of got a problem with this one. I mean, I get the uh, that she we got uh, everyone else what everyone else is doing. Um, I took a marketing class and that's called the bandwagon technique where, you know, like nine out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste or choosy mothers choose this, that, that type of thing. Um, I'm not as, as swayed by that, I guess. Um, I've heard a lot though, but uh, I just, as far as, I, t I actually talked to a lot of parents and, and participants and uh, a lot of the comments I got were, I wouldn't expect to get paid for work I didn't do. And one comment I got was, these are people who are um, modeling and teaching with our uh, our core values for the district and uh, is that what we want and not to mention a lot of people are laid off or a lot of the businesses haven't earned very much money in the last eight weeks and uh, I know pretty soon we're going to be asked to approve a levy for the maximum allowable by law for property taxes for these people. And if we're going to be spending it to hire people to not coach, that just doesn't, uh, that doesn't add up with me. But that's my one sixth of the school board opinion. So go ahead and unmute if you have uh, input. No. Can you hear me? Go ahead, yes. Okay, so um, what I can agree with you more, um, but I am under the assumption, and maybe Don can answer this for me, if we have coaches who are teachers, it's in their contract that they would be getting their coaching wage, correct? That's normally what they've uh, been doing. Um, I'd remind you, though, uh, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, that this was a request that we gather information. We didn't use it for marketing. We just brought up because we were asked to. Um, yes, theoretically, it's in the contract in Part C that the uh, the ones that are hired here should be paid. Uh, but you can see by that, not everyone is doing that. All the head coaches are getting uh, full pay. And, and I would say a lot of the coaching is the preparation. Some of these people started to coach beforehand. Um, matter of fact, I think all of them had some part in coaching and track had already started. That's all I can say about it right now. Did that answer your question, Allie? Um, You're muted, Ellie. Okay, sorry about that. Can you hear me, Ellie? I think we lost her. Your video froze up and now you're muted. We'll send David over there to help her. Oh, he's coming in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, did someone answer me? Yeah, you're good now. Go ahead. Okay, so my question was, the coaches that we hired prior to these spring coaches, they will be getting their full pay, even though the season didn't take place. 
I'll put that on Dawn. How do you read that, Dawn? Well, they were approved to be approved to be on contract, assuming the season was going to happen. Um, theory, theory, relically, um, because it is past practice, I'm not sure where where we would stand union wise if we didn't pay the te teachers. Um, it, it's uh, definitely up for discussion. Discussion. Last time I chatted about it, I, you know, fiscally, I was on the on the side of erring in caution and paying a prorated part of it um, for the, you know, for setup and for preparation. But I was um, fiscally not on board with paying the full amount. Um, that's where I stood. But like I said, we have a past practice with Schedule C being part of the teachers' bargaining unit. Our bargaining agreement so it could i mean you know there's that chance that you know it's a it's a, it's set a precedent it's past practice um you know the ones that are aren't on contract definitely would be a pro rate but you know i don't know about the you know i don't the board has to make that decision um, like i said it is a past practice we have paid coaches however the season has fulfilled itself it has there's been participation um, so this is an unprecedented situation. However, we had the practice is still to pay our coaches when they've been on Schedule C because it is part of that bargaining agreement. Does that answer your question? Yes, that helped. But did he also have some input? Mr. Gerard, Mary Lang. I, I really agree with you. I think you can only uh, get paid for what you do. And if these people have done some work, they absolutely need to get paid for it. But if they haven't fulfilled their entire position, that should be reported. They have had no student contact. And part of coaching is having student contact. Thank you. Um, how about the, how about we, Anybody remember what date they canceled the season? It was the Thursday before the last board meeting. I'd have to look at the actual date. Okay, so it was in March or April. I mean. How about if we pay them up through the date that season was canceled? Because April 23rd. They were they were putting in effort, you know, thinking that the season was going to happen. Nobody expected it to to happen, but um, I think it would be fair to pay them up through the date that the season was canceled, assuming they were already hired and planning to to coach. Um, once the season was canceled, I can't imagine that they put a lot of effort into getting ready to coach. Does that sound fair to you guys? I agree. I was going to say, agree. Don't, yeah. don't forget there's That's preparation true. before practices start. So, and Noel, question is, are you, you wanted to apply that to all coaches, not just these that we have on the list now, right? You're talking all coaches, spring coaches, sorry. Right. Yeah, and one of the people I talked to was actually a very successful baseball coach, and uh, he he kind of was, you know, he said you're trying to build character in these children, and if you're in there trying to get paid for something you didn't do, you're not really setting the example for them, which I hadn't really thought of that aspect of it, but uh, I was more looking at what's fair, you know, to them and to the taxpayers. If we're gonna come up in August and say, we, we need to take the maximum amount legally possible from you. And, you know, once taxpayers find out that we're hiring people after the season was canceled or paying people for a full season when it was canceled in April, um, I just, I don't think that's fair to them either. So to be fair to both sides, I think pay them up through when it was canceled 
don't hire people to not coach. And uh, that's just my own thought. So I'd be really happy to hear what everybody else thinks. Um, I do want to call a point of order. That would take a different uh, action item not to pay the people that were already hired. So you just assumed we were going to pay the people that were already hired full season? Did not say that. That would take a different action item. The discussion was whether we hire these people here, of which there was no discussion. That's so why I say it's a point of order. The action item is to approve these people to be hired. That's that's what okay. what the item is tonight. Okay, we can deal with that one tonight. And uh, if if you guys want to discuss the the rest of it. Um, you know, I don't want to be the only one talking about this. I'd like to get your input from each of the other board members. So it's probably uh, that's sure. a really well taken point of order because um, it it is a different thing. Go ahead, Greg, if you try. I agree that um, they should be prorated up to the time that the the season was canceled and if that takes making a motion next meeting i think we should do that okay um don go ahead i just want to make the board aware that most of the time well every time every year at the end of the season that la that coach's payment does happen at the end of may so um we generally would it could happen the 15th of june too but generally just just so you guys are aware that we're looking at some point to pay these whatever you guys decide by is preferably by the end of may but we can go out to june 16th um the union may not like that but uh that that is also a board decision okay is there anybody uh, so, that's violently against um, that thinks we should just pay the coaches um, for the full season that are already hired? What I was going to suggest to you, number one, I see Jeremy Shaw's picture popped up, so I don't know if you want to let him talk or not. But um, we can always have a special meeting earlier to make that discussion that you want to make. Okay. Jeremy, are you able to hear me? Would you like to address the crowd? Go ahead and unmute yourself and see if we can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Um, I, I guess to Don's point is that Generally, you know, in years past, the past precedent is that for sure by that June 15th check, these coaches are getting paid. So I think to kick the can, so to speak, down the road to the end of June um, does not follow, you know, our past practice in this district. Um, so I, I think that if you are going to pro-rate or whatever that means, and I'm not really sure how you're going to do some of those positions. Um, for example, myself, right? I'm the prom advisor. No, we did not have prom. But 90% of being the prom advisor is not the day of the prom. It's all the planning and the work that goes in before that. And I'm not sure how you necessarily measure some of those variables. A coach that hasn't started yet at the junior high level, Obviously, all of these are, are different. So just some things for the board to think about. Great. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, so when you guys say past practice, are you saying um, it's past practice to pay the coaches in full because the this, this season, or in spite of the season being canceled, or are you saying it's past practice to pay the coaches at the end of the 
uh, Don Duvel, I'll speak to that. It's past practice to pay the coaches at the, at the end of their season. Once they are finished with the coaching season, the past practice is to pay them a, a, a payroll stipend for their coaching on, on the May 31st or June 15th payroll. So that has been the past practice for years. So that's the past practice if the season was not canceled. Right, but this is unprecedented. So yes, you're, you're right. This is if they, they, when they fulfilled their regular season, we would pay them for their coaching. Okay, that's the past practice. Mr. Gerard, Mary Lang, this is a very unusual time. And because it is, I don't see how a past practice would present itself as a past practice. We've never canceled a season due to an epidemic, at least not in my lifetime. So because of that, I really think people need to tell us exactly what they've done this year to earn the money that they are expecting. And this makes me a little disappointed because I think that as a former teacher and as a role model, as a parent, I think you really has to have to be honest and look at how much of your time and talent have spent this and you haven't had to contact. Thank you. All right. I, I do just want to reiterate one thing. Whatever you guys decide as a board, um, whether to prorate it or pay in full, I do need those. I do need the payment if it if it comes to fruition before the end of this fiscal year. That I mean, that is a, that is I, that is a Gasby UFARS rule. It has to be expensed in at, in this year in the nineteen twenty school year. Just so you guys are aware of that. And that ends when. June 30th. June 30th, okay. Yep. Director Garrods? Yeah, I guess I agree with you, Noel, and I think we can certainly establish a, a special meeting prior to that to make sure that it, that we, once we decide, right, to get it done. But the other thing is, can I get a request of all the coaches, like the spring coaches, like prom, that doesn't really, I wouldn't have came to my mind right away. So that that's a good point that Jeremy had, right? So I think getting a list of all the thing all the you know advisors, coaches that are due this spring would be it would be nice to have um sooner than later so we can start thinking about some of that. Like you said, like prom is a great example. I think Jeremy should just have to do it again next year, right? Isn't that, that what that means? <laughs> you have two proms next year. You want right, exactly. <laughs> Delonta Jeremy? Was that? Yeah. Well, we, we had thrown around some ideas, but uh, we will for sure hopefully have a prom next year. Uh, okay. But, you know. I would suggest that uh, we ask Tony to collect information. I don't know what Jeremy thinks about that uh, either, but uh, I'm certain that uh, that's one of the jobs that Tony can be doing, uh, AD. Uh, is to collect that information from each one of the uh, spring coaches as to everything they've done. Um, and then I would suggest that we put a meeting together, a special meeting um, at another time. I'm looking, we could do it later next week if you would like. Uh, that's the last week of school, uh, maybe the 26th or 27th. I don't know where people are on that. Uh, but to talk about it, to put together something. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I want to be fair to the, the coaches and the taxpayers as well. So I'm sure we can come up to, with something that's fair. It doesn't have to be some weird thing. It just be what's fair. Go ahead, Director Petron, you're on mute. Director Petron, you're on. okay, go for it. Would we be able to uh, make a motion and pass with that special meeting? Yes. Yeah, it would be a special meeting with the agenda with one item on it. 
um, screen code in, and you know we can have a discussion and come up with a solution and then vote on it. But tonight we can't because it's it's a separate issue from are we going to hire these people tonight? That one we are going to vote on tonight. Is there any other discussion on? Go ahead. So, in the special media meeting on the agenda, how will the will there be two motions, one against and one for, and one for it, or how do you how do you how do you do this? Go ahead. I, I think that's relatively easy. You put a, you're going to have an action item on paying our coaches. And then you discuss it and put it together and have that discussion at that time. Um, and like I said, I think that might be a meeting that we bring Tony in on too uh, to report out. And you put together the percentages. I don't think it's a bad practice as to what, uh, you take a look what Foley had on the form I sent out. That's not a bad procedure if you're looking at partial, but clearly, like I said, it depends on what you're talking about. A good share, like Jeremy had for prom, hey, it was all set up, ready to go. And uh, that took a lot of time, a lot of effort. And then they readjusted the scales on that too. Yeah, and that's all discussions we can have once we get that list of um, people who are expecting to get paid for whatever activity it happened to be. Okay, any other discussion on approval of spring coaches? Okay, it was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Holm to approve above listed spring coaches. Any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Director Holm. No. Director Garrett. Hi. Sorry about that. So that's a, a yes. That's a yes to hire both. Okay, Director Lang. No. Director Petron. Aye. Okay, and Director Dreadl vote no, so that one failed. Uh, three to two to zero. Okay, approval of resignations. Ashley Kelly, third grade teacher. Lisa Koenig, fourth grade teacher. I'll entertain a motion for that. I'll make the motion. This is, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh Rusker. Rusker. Anybody else want to second that? I'll second that. Uh, this I'll is direct. Mr. Gerard will second it. Okay, is there any discussion on that one? Okay, hearing none. Director Garrett for approval of resignation. Mr. Holm. Aye. Aye. Director Lane. Aye. Aye. Mr. Petron. Aye. Okay, that motion carries 500. Approval of hiring. Royalton School Board will approve the following hires based on the findings of each individual's license status and discipline report from the Minnesota Department of Education. Can you guys hear me better than you could earlier? You can hear me though, right? Okay. Okay. I'm going to take a shot at the first one. Zandra Stoman, Jordan Wetterland for elementary social worker. I'm sorry, Zandra Stoneman was elementary art. Hannah Call, fifth grade teacher. Mitch Peace, 
third grade teacher, Samantha Veld, elementary music teacher, Megan Deuce for elementary and secondary SPED. I'll entertain a motion for the hiring of those individuals. I'll make that motion. Mark. Thank you. John. Ellie Holm, I'll second. Thank you. Um, any discussion on that? I do have a question. Um, on these, uh, these are all elementary teachers. Um, Dr. Gerbato, what? How many people applied for those positions on average? It, it depends, like the music, art, social worker, a lower number, maybe seven or so. Uh, the classroom teachers, more like a hundred. So it varied by position. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on that item? Okay, hearing none, all those, or sorry about that. We got to do a roll call. Director Petron? Aye. Director Lang? Aye. Director Garrett? Aye. Director Holm? Aye. Okay, motion carries 500. Changes in grading for distance learning. Elementary system for grading will be M for meets expectations, PM for partially meets expectations, SM starting to meet expectations. In the secondary, the guidelines are A, which is a standard A, B, which is a standard B, C, which is a standard, um, and then you can have pass, where they get some help, get it with some help, and then no pass, nothing being done before or during distance learning. Parents will be a part of the decision in the secondary. Both schools are well aware that not all students have the same advantages at home. Their access to technology can be very, very limited. Director Garrett, I'll make the motion. Director Garrett made the motion. Director Holm, I'll second. It was approved by, or it was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Holm to approve elementary and secondary grading practices during distance learning. Um, is there any discussion on that? I do have a question. Um, when it says M meets expectation, um, is the expectation the state standard or is it just a locally thought up expectation? Um, it, the instructions based on the standards, yes. So if they meet expectations, I think they meet state standards. Um, I, I didn't quite hear, Noel. So you're saying if they meet expectations, that means they meet the state standards? Yes. Okay. That was something, if you remember, we changed uh, two years ago when they went through the curriculum so they knew what standards they had to write. Okay. Does, uh, do the parents have that, that available yet? I believe that's online. Well, it's on the MDA or MDE. Website. I believe that's online for us also. Okay. Did they get it? written in simplified language or is it just straight off of the website? I can't remember. Phil, can you help me a little bit? It's not just uh, the standards there, but then they put some common language to it and that's also part of the proficiency scales that they're working on. We're, we're certainly in the process of doing that. Uh, I don't think it's complete yet. Nolan, I think it got interrupted with this distance learning. 
Okay. But that that is that is the goal, and we are moving toward that. But I think it did get disrupted. Okay. So are we like 90% there or 40% there or where? Well, for example, in math, we're definitely 90% there. We have work to do. Uh, you know, the other, the next subject we're going to be working on is um, English language arts. So it's a process. But this year we work primarily on math and uh, I think we're in really good shape. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion on creating practices? Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor of approving the secondary and elementary grading practices. Roll call. Roll call. Who said that? Oh, you're not even. <laughs> I'm just letting you know it's got to be a roll call. Okay, Director Harris. Aye. Director Petron. Aye. Director Lang. Aye. Director Holm. Aye. Okay, that motion carries 500. Approval of football lights. I'll entertain a motion for that one. I'll make that motion, Mark Petron. Okay. No second, Mary Lang. It is moved by Director Petron, seconded by Director Lang to approve light replacements above as per administrative recommendation. Uh, four new poles, $6,940, 96 LED floodlights, $8,642.72 after the rebate. Oak Electric for labor and materials, $7,804.24 for a total of $23,686.96. Is there any discussion on that item? Okay, hearing none, Director Petron, you in favor of that? Aye. Director Lang. You're on. Okay. Was that a yes? Yes. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, Director Holm. Yes. Director Gerrids. Yes. And Director Gerard is yes. Motion carries 500. Okay, approval of facility fees. I'll entertain a motion for that. Director Holm, I'll make the motion. Director Gerrids, I'll second. Okay, it's moved by Director Holm and seconded by Director Garrods to approve the new facility fees. Is there any discussion on that? Does everybody get a chance to read what the fees are? It's uh, 120 if you're a resident taxpayer and 300 if you're non-resident. Okay. All right. All those in favor, Director Garrett's. Sorry, you had me wondering about the fees again. I wanted to go check to make sure that's what I read as well. Um, uh, Is that correct? Can I... Yeah, that's correct. Uh, annual resident 120, non-resident 300. It's on the... Yep, I found it. Thank you. So, Director Garrett's votes yes. Okay. And Director Holm. Yes. 
district of Petron. Yes. Director Lang. Director Lang. Yes. Okay, motion carries five zero zero. Dr. Gabata, resignation and rehiring. I'll entertain a motion for that one. Director Holm, I'll make the motion. Director Garrett, it's all second. It is moved by Director Holm, second by Director Garrett to approve resignation of Dr. Gabata on Friday, July 3rd, and rehiring July 6th. As part of the agreement, we'll forego an increase in salary for the next two years. Is there any discussion on that item? Okay, hearing none. Director Holm. Yes. Director Garrett. Yes. Director Lane. Yes. Director Petron. Yes. Okay, motion carries five zero zero. Teachers memorandum of understanding. I'll entertain a motion for that. Director Gerards. I'll second it. It was moved by Director Gerards and seconded by Director Gerard to approve the memorandum of understanding, correcting the editing error as attached. And this is in regards to the teacher's contract. Is there any discussion on that one? Okay, Director Gerard is yes. Director Petron? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Holm? Yes. Director Garrods? Yes. Okay, next item is K, graduation approval if amended. I don't this really know what that means, but we'll get it in the question part. Let's just get a motion for right now. I, I, the reason I put that in there real fast is I didn't know if you'd amend it in the. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Okay. okay, so you you did amend it to bring it up as an action item. That's all that meant. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve this. Make a motion, motion. to approve that? Yeah. Okay. And do we have a second? Director Holm, I'll second. Okay. Moved by Director Petron, seconded by Director Holm to approve graduation ceremony as presented to the board. Is there any discussion on that? Director Petron, uh, Joel, I would like to hand out my uh, daughter's graduation certificate. Okay. Joel gave you a thumbs up there. Any other discussion? Okay, Director Petron, all those in favor? Aye. Director Lang? Aye. Director Gerard is an aye. Director Holm? Aye. Director Garrett? Aye. Okay. Upcoming meeting schedule, Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. policy meeting. And then Monday, June 22nd at 6 p.m. is a regular board meeting. 
And then I would bring up to you about a special meeting. Okay. To discuss uh, coaches. Okay. Sounds good. Um, if we, Don can help me out a little bit here. If we got it on the 26th or 27th, could it hit the payroll for the 30th or is that too late? That's too late. We have to have the um, payroll wire into Federal Reserve by the 27th. So if we had a meeting on the 26th, we could make it. Or is that too um, late for you? Hold on. And I don't know if the rest of you can meet on the 26th or not. Man, I that's pushing it because of the holiday. Payroll has to be has to be out on the 29th to, right. to everybody. So unless Tony has it all figured out and how much is gonna go and we can add it right away on the 26th, that would be the only way that would work. So if they met in the morning and he had all his ducks in a row, we could put it in in the morning, but that would be the only way that would work. It would probably have to move to June 15th. And I think if Jeremy's still on, I think he, I think they would be okay with that because this is unprecedented. I think we move that payment to the 15th of June and give us some time to get a special meeting together. Any, any conversation on that? I guess for me, I could not meet Tuesday during the day. So it would have to be Tuesday evening and and then by then you're out of time, right? Because then you'd be on the 27th. I could certainly meet the evening of the 26th, but I don't think we want to have, like you said, they would have to go to June. Let, let's meet June 1st, if that works for anybody. I won't I mean, be here June 1st. Who won't? I will not be here June 1st, just so you know. Oh, what, what works for everybody before the 12th of Should we do that? Uh, I can put out a message to you as to uh, alternative dates and you get back to me. That'll also give Tony a chance to dig up stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. It has to happen that first week of June because we have payroll. It has to be out on the 12th, I believe. Is that okay with everybody else? Yeah, I'm certainly available to meet next week. So it, for me, it could either happen next week or the first week of June. I'm pretty open. Not going anywhere. Yeah, we can meet next week. It's just I think we won't put it on until the June 15th payroll because it just we don't have enough time. I'll put out something to you tonight yet. If you come back to me and let me know uh, okay. what would work next week would be great. All right. Anybody got anything else that they like to address tonight before we adjourn? Thank you everybody for your patience. And um, I, you know, it, it's kind of hard. I don't know if I'm coming in broken and stupid, but it's, uh, it's different, isn't it? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Director Peach, we'll make that motion. We'll make that motion. Just okay. second. Okay. It is moved by Director Petron and by Director Lang to adjourn the meeting at uh, 7 46 p.m. Any discussion? Okay, Director Holm. This is the adjourn. Director <laughs> Gary. Aye. Director Lang. Aye. Director Petron. Aye. I don't have a one of those little hammer deals, so meetings adjourned. <laughs> Thanks. Guys. Thank you.